All right, so here's the problem. I have this shot that is super underexposed. So when I bring it up, add some saturation, it looks like this. So at first glance, it looks totally fine until I punch in. Just look at this. It is absolutely unusable. So in this video, I'm gonna share advanced noise reduction techniques that I pretty much use on every single professional project to get the cleanest image possible without losing any detail. And for those that want to practice along, you can download the footage from my Discord channel. Link is gonna be in the description below. All I ask in return is subscribe to the channel, smash the like button, and let's jump in. Now, before we begin, I must say that noise reduction is only available in the studio version, which is basically the paid version. There are two different ways to use noise reduction. The first method is right here, which is my favorite, what I go with. And the second version is right here. So you can basically type in noise reduction and use it as an OFX. You can drop that on and then everything is exactly the same. Okay, so temporal NR, temporal NR, uh, spatial NR, spatial NR. I'm not gonna be using the OFX, but like I said, the results are going to be identical, okay? So just wanna get that out of the way. We recently did a survey. Majority of you, regardless of the skill set, are struggling with shot matching, skin tones, balancing, and working with 8-bit footage. So I created a one hour long free training that covers all of that. Plus, we'll wrap up the training with an extensive Q&A and you'll also get a link to download the practice footage, power grades, and some of my personal LUTs. Link to the training is in the description below. Let's get back to the video. Now, a million dollar question is, where are you supposed to put your noise reduction? You want to apply noise reduction before you start grading. So your keys are gonna be cleaner, your corrections are gonna be so much smoother. The second point is that if you're gonna be caching your node, you don't want it downstream because then anytime you make a change, it has to re-render. I have an entire video where I show you how to get 75% faster performance out of your resolve, regardless of the system that you're using. If you wanna watch that video, link is gonna be up top and in the description below. So this is our shot. It's super dark, right? This is Rec. 709 because right here. So black magic to Rec. 709, super, super dark. So I went ahead and made some corrections. So I brought up the exposure, balanced my image out, and then I added some uh, saturation to create color separation. But when I punch in, look at what's happening. Just look at all this noise that was introduced. So if I kill these two, all of a sudden, like there's so much noise, this image is not usable. So what can we do? The way noise reduction is laid out in Resolve is how it's supposed to be used. So from left to right. So on your left, you have temporal NR. It uses advanced algorithms to clean up your image without losing too much information. And it analyzes your video across multiple frames. And that's very interesting because what it does is that it separates the subject from the background. And then when the noise reduction is applied, it leaves the moving objects kind of as is, and then it cleans up everything else. Let's start with clicking on frames and it goes from zero to five. So the more frames you pick, the better the results are gonna be, but it is super, super, super processor intensive. And two, if you have a lot of movement in your image, if you're gonna pick too many frames, it's gonna create ghosting or artifacting. So keep those things in mind. So let's play our footage and see how much movement is happening there. Not a lot of movement, but still, the mouth is moving, his face is moving a little bit. So I'm gonna set this to two. That is close to normal. Motion estimate type is basically quality. So faster is gonna be low quality, better is gonna be high quality. And to really see the difference in quality, I'm gonna do this. I'm just gonna go crank this to 100 and punch in a little bit. Look at, just keep an eye in this area right here and then better. You see like how it brings back so much more detail. So just keep an eye here. This is faster, becomes a mush and then better, so much better. How much you want to clean up your image is going to be determined by this slider right here. And look at how good of a job it does. Like, even if I just go all the way to 100, like, look at how it's keeping detail in his eyes. And then 
cleaning up everything else. It's not getting like the really fine grain, but uh, that's where another tool will come in handy, but it's doing a lot. Obviously we don't wanna leave it at 100, that's gonna be super amateurish and especially like how much movement that's happening here. I'm not a fan of that. So what can we do to control that? First of all, let's uh, dial that back a little bit. And then I'm just gonna keep an eye on this area right here. So what happens? Like if I go, where does the effect kind of stops? And that's where I wanna leave it. So anything past that, it doesn't really help us. It kind of ruins our image. So why even crank it to 100? So that's usually a good threshold where you wanna keep your noise reduction. If I do before and after, looking pretty good. I just don't like how much movement is happening here. If I take my motion and go to zero, you see how the noise reduction comes in here and everywhere? We basically kill the effect because remember I said, it's analyzing your footage across multiple frames. It needs some motion data to apply noise reduction. So when you go to zero, you're basically saying everything is a subject. What I need to do is I need to kind of go back in here and I need to start moving that back same mindset that we applied right here, our Luma and Chroma sliders. And if I do before and after, the results are much better than when it was at 50, okay? And it's still doing a lot, but it's not really shifting his face, like the shape of his face and his beard and everything like it was before. Now we're gonna move on to special threshold, which is taking care of anything that temporal threshold couldn't get. And most of the time, like I said, it's gonna be fine grain, but with special threshold, you gotta be very careful. If you push it too much, it's gonna make your image look plasticky, unrealistic. The combo between the two, how they work, your brain is about to explode. So now what we wanna do is pretty much same effect. What I wanna show you is that I wanna kinda of crank it too much. So I wanna keep it somewhere around here. And you see like what it did, right? Discoloration that it added, which is out of control. So like before and after, like crazy amount of discoloration. That's where the modes come in. So right now it's set to faster, which is quality, right? Modes are quality. And then we can try better and look at the difference. So like this is faster and then this is better. Night and day. Okay, what about enhance? Like crazy, right? So much more information came back. So it has to be enhanced for sure, but still doesn't need to be so caked on. So let's, Kind of, again, same mindset, like let's keep pulling it back to where it's making a difference. Maybe somewhere around here. This like really does it for me. So guys, look at before, after, before, after, before, after. Let's not forget that let's park it here. Where we started to where we are is ridiculous, but what I'm about to show you is gonna take it to a whole another level. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in this tab right here and I'm gonna change it to blur sharpen. And what I'm gonna do is this, okay? I'm gonna hit shift H and I'm gonna go hit these two guys, A, B, and uh, nothing really happens right now because we haven't really made a change. But if I were to take this and pull this down, you see what's happening? And that's exactly what we need. We just want to sharpen the edges, okay? But if I were to come out and show you the effect, it's too harsh. It's It makes it look too video-like. It's too freaking much. Like, look at that. So how do we control it? Like this looks like VHS, right? That's not what we want. So how do we control it? Because all I want is just a little bit of information in these areas and these edges, like right here, like these here, over here, and then everything else I wanna leave it as is. So I'm gonna go back to Shift H, A, B, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna use scaling right here. And I'm gonna start dialing that back and just look what happens. So let's take it all the way gone and now let's start pulling it up a little bit i'm gonna pull it up a little bit go back go back 
What if I leave it somewhere around here? Shift H, come out of it. On and off. Super, super subtle. Probably not visible on YouTube. So in that case, I mean, can we exaggerate it a little bit? Let's go back, Shift H, A, B. And then what if I just exaggerate it a little bit? I don't like to do that, but if I'm working on an actual project, I won't push it. But actually, it's not bad. I don't mind it. So even at 0.5, and let's go here. Yeah. It is very, very subtle. But see, like, it just sharpens up the image so much. This is what we started with. Brought up our image, added saturation. It looked absolutely hideous. Used all the jiggery pokery in noise reduction panel. And then went in and added a final touch to sharpen our image. And here's the final look. And if you like what you saw, subscribe to the channel, smash the like button. I'll see you in the next video.